Good morning and welcome to the fifth day this week of our homilies. We thank God for this far that he has brought us. Today we will be looking at Romans chapter 14 verses 17 to 23 and our topic for today is the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful and grateful for yet another day you have granted us. Lord, open our hearts and our minds to understand your word and to receive it, that we may be able to do that which you call us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let me read for us Romans chapter 14, verse 17 to 23, which we will be considering this morning. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives approval, receives hum, and receives human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but is wrong, it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever doubts is condemned if they eat because their eating is not from faith and everything that comes does not come from faith is sin. And this is the word of the Lord. Now, this morning, we see that Paul is talking about the kingdom of God. In these verses, he brings out what the kingdom of God entails. And I want to talk a little bit about the kingdom of God. Now, scripture in both the New and the Old Testament is full of passages that talk about God's kingdom. And you see, the kingdom of God is about the rule of Christ as the king on earth and in heaven. And it's about many other things. But with the moment you realize that you belong to the kingdom of God and therefore must adhere to the rules of Christ or to Christ as king, meaning then you must submit under his authority, then it means then what he desires, what example he set becomes important for us. The Gospel of Matthew, we see the writer presenting Christ's arrival in his incarnation. And here Matthew announces about the coming of the kingdom of God at the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. And we see in Matthew 4.17, the Bible says, From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. So whenever it is we talk about the kingdom of God, it is consistent with repentance and therefore righteousness. You can read more about what is presented about the kingdom of God in Matthew chapters 5 all the way to chapter 7. You will see the issues that Jesus addresses about the kingdom of God and what it entails. But let's briefly look at Matthew 7. Verse 1, the Bible says that Jesus told his disciples, do not judge others and you will not be judged. And he goes on to explain that when you judge, certain things will happen to you. For example, you will be judged with the same measure with which you judge others. And then verse 5, he says that if you are judging others, then you are a hypocrite because you fail to realize that you are not perfect yourself. Now let's move away from this idea of judging others 
and just concentrate on what the kingdom of God entails. I'm bringing out the issue of judgment because that's what we've been talking about the whole of this week. And Christ warns us against judging others. Mm. Now, Matthew 6, 33, the Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So Matthew here is emphasizing that the kingdom of God is about righteousness and holiness, which is exactly what Paul is saying in Romans 14, verse 17. Verse 17 says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating, drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So Paul is saying that we should not put so much effort on issues to do with eating and drinking or rules and regulations because we are destroying the work of God if we do that, according to verse 20. Verse 20 says, do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. So Paul is clear that food offered to idol in and of itself cannot defile you. But he's saying for the sake of the conscience of that other person who believes since they became a Christian, they must live the way they used to live meaning move away from that way they used to live. If they used to drink, for example, they cannot continue drinking and therefore they believe drinking wine is wrong. You who is a Christian for a longer time and you don't believe wine is wrong, Paul is saying don't drink wine with them or in their presence because you are stumbling them. They might go back Maybe decide Christianity is not worth if you who has been a Christian for a long time are doing the very thing that he used to do. So for their sake, don't do it. Paul is calling believers to love one another enough to sacrifice your freedom for the sake of the salvation of the other person. Now, I acknowledge that this is not easy to do but it is what is being an authentic Christian is all about. Christ sets a good example by accepting to become man and to suffer for our sake. But he could have stayed in heaven where he was comfortable. But because of love, love for you and me, he sacrificed his comfort so that he could die for our sins. Are you going to sacrifice your comfort for the sake of saving another soul that Jesus died for? Or will you destroy another soul for your comfort and luxury? May the Lord help you to choose what is right. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your word that is reminding us what the kingdom of God is all about. It's about righteousness and holiness. It's about love. You have loved us and you have called us to love one another. Lord, would you help us to choose to love others by sacrificing our comfort so that we may save others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you.